Picture it. Desert sands, the broad stretch of the, the river, the orange sun emerging from a horizontal line. A minimalist picture from Cecil B. DeMille or maybe Lawrence of Arabia. Now stay there with me for a moment as we see from far away what the Egyptians saw and conjure up the lens they used in our imagination telescope. A hymn of praise to Ra when he riseth in the eastern part of heaven. Behold Osiris, Kenna the merchant, who saith, Homage to thee in thy rising, thou Tamu in thy crowns of beauty. Thou risest, thou risest, thou Ra shinest, thou shinest at dawn of day. Thou art crowned like unto the king of the gods, and the goddess Shuti doeth homage unto thee. The company of the gods praise thee from the double dwelling. Thou goest forth over the upper air, and thy heart is filled with gladness. The sectet boat draweth onward as Ra cometh to the haven in the atet boat with fair winds. Ra rejoiceth, Ra rejoiceth. Thy father is new, thy mother is nut, and thou art crowned as Ra Hamakis. Thy sacred boat advanceth in peace. Thy foe hath been cast down, and his head hath been cut off. The heart of the Lady of Life rejoiceth in that the enemy of her Lord hath been overthrown. The mariners of Ra have content of heart, and Anu rejoiceth. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Square One, the podcast where we journey back to the roots of human creativity. I'm your host, Clayton Hester, and today we're embarking on an expedition into the heart of the desert, where the sands of time have been witness to some of the most awe-inspiring creations of the ancient world. In the land of the pharaohs, creativity wasn't merely an abstract concept. It was a tangible manifestation of their profound understanding of the universe. The ancient Egyptians didn't just build structures. They created epic, physical poems etched into the landscape, odes to their gods, their kings and the celestial bodies they held sacred. Their creativity was not confined within the boundaries of what we today call art. It transcended into the realm of architecture, with grand structures like the pyramids, temples, and obelisks punctuating the Egyptian skyline. Take the pyramids, for instance. The Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the most iconic symbols of creativity from the ancient world. It wasn't merely a product of labor and raw materials. It was the physical embodiment of the Egyptians' advanced knowledge in mathematics and engineering. This wasn't creativity for creativity's sake. This was creativity with purpose with function, and with a deep spiritual significance. Similarly, the grand temples of Egypt were not just places of worship, but they were also masterpieces of design and engineering. Every column, every glyph, every statue was a testament to the creativity of their builders. The temple was more than just a building. It was a story, a chronicle of their beliefs, their hopes, and their aspirations. Then there were the obelisks, tall and pointed, reaching for the sky. They were not mere stones, they were symbols, messages to the gods etched in hieroglyphs. In their simplicity, they represented the pinnacle of the ancient Egyptians' creativity and their desire to connect with the divine. In Egypt, architecture wasn't just about erecting structures. It was about creating symbols, symbols that conveyed stories, beliefs, and values. Symbols that stood the test of time surviving thousands of years to tell us their tales. This was the Egyptians' understanding of creativity, a tool to shape their world and their perception of the cosmos. The pyramids, for instance, were not just magnificent tombs for the pharaohs, but also a representation of the ancient Egyptian concept of ascension to the afterlife. The pyramid's shape itself was significant. The sloping sides were thought to represent the rays of the sun, and the pyramid pointed skyward symbolizing the pharaoh's journey towards the sun god, Ra. In this sense, the pyramids are a creative expression of the ancient Egyptians' understanding of life, death, and the cosmos. The temples of ancient Egypt served as the homes of the gods and goddesses. Every element in their construction had a symbolic meaning. For example, the floor of the temple would often gradually rise from the entrance to the sanctuary symbolizing the progression from the human world to the divine. The columns were carved to resemble lotus or papyrus plants, symbolizing life and creation. 
even the orientation of the temple was significant, often aligning with celestial bodies or the Nile. The temples embodied the ancient Egyptians' deep religious beliefs and their perception of the universe. Obelisks, towering and solitary, were monolithic symbols of the sun god Ra. They were usually made from single pieces of stone, often granite, which had to be transported hundreds of miles. The peak of the obelisk was typically covered in gold or electrum, an alloy of gold and silver, to shine in the sun, further reinforcing the connection to Ra. The obelisks represented the ancient Egyptians' desire to reach for the heavens and connect with the divine, showing their creativity and translating their beliefs into physical form. Ancient Egyptian art, much like its architecture, was not created in a vacuum. It was deeply rooted in their cultural, religious, and philosophical beliefs. Unlike the free-flowing abstract art of the modern era, Egyptian art was characterized by its order and symmetry, reflecting their conception of the world as an orderly and predictable place. One of the most distinctive features of Egyptian art was its highly stylized and symbolic nature. Every element in an Egyptian artwork had a specific meaning and purpose. They were not merely aesthetic choices, but deliberate attempts to convey deeper truths about the gods, the pharaohs, and everyday life. Take, for instance, the unique way in which humans were depicted in Egyptian art. The canonical representation of figures, the profile view of the head and legs, combined with the frontal view of the torso, is instantly recognizable. This was not a limitation of their artistic skill, but rather a deliberate artistic convention. It allowed them to represent each body part from its most recognizable angle, ensuring clarity and completeness in their depiction of the human form. Moreover, this representation had a symbolic dimension. The pharaohs and gods were often depicted as larger than other figures. This was not an attempt at realistic portrayal, but a reflection of their status and importance. Even the colors used had symbolic meanings. For instance, men were often painted red to represent outdoor work and women were painted yellow, indicative of them staying indoors. Art, for the Egyptians, was not just about pleasing the eye. It was a way to document their beliefs, their values, and their way of life. Even scenes of daily life, often depicted on the walls of tombs, were not merely literal representations. They were idealized versions of life, showing people forever young, forever happy, engaging in activities that the deceased enjoyed in life and hoped to continue in the afterlife. In their art, the Egyptians created a world that mirrored their ideals, a world of order, harmony, and eternal joy, a world where the divine and the mortal coexisted. This was the creative vision of the ancient Egyptians, a vision that shaped their art, their culture, and their civilization. The ancient Egyptians were not just architects and artists. They were also innovators in communication. They developed a system of writing that was as beautiful as it was complex, the hieroglyphs. These pictorial scripts were a testament to their creative prowess and their deep understanding of the power of language. Hieroglyphs were more than just a way to record transactions or chronicle the reign of pharaohs. They were an art form in their own right. Each hieroglyph was a work of art meticulously drawn with a deep symbolic meaning. But the true genius of the ancient Egyptians lay not just in the creation of these symbols, but in the way they were used. The hieroglyphic script was a complex system that combined logographic, syllabic, and alphabetic elements. This means that a single hieroglyph could represent a word, a sound, or even a concept. The ability to express complex ideas in such a versatile and efficient manner was a true mark of their creative genius. But the Egyptians didn't stop there. They brought their artistic sensibility to the arrangement and presentation of hieroglyphic texts. The placement of the symbols, their size, and even their direction were all carefully considered to create a harmonious and aesthetically pleasing composition. Scribes were not just record keepers, they were artists, tasked with the vital role of turning the written word into a visual masterpiece. Hieroglyphs are a perfect example of the fusion of form and function that characterized ancient Egyptian creativity. 
they demonstrate that the Egyptians saw creativity not as an isolated activity, but as an integral part of every aspect of their lives, from the grandeur of their architecture, the symbolism in their art, to the elegance of their written language. The ancient Egyptians were master craftsmen, excelling in a range of disciplines from pottery and woodworking to metalworking and jewelry making. Their skill is still evident today, thousands of years later, in the intricate designs and the superior workmanship of the items that have been unearthed by archaeologists. Pottery was an integral part of daily life in ancient Egypt, used for cooking, storage, and religious rituals. But for the Egyptians, pottery was not just utilitarian, it was also an avenue for artistic expression. The pots were often decorated with intricate designs, painted or etched into the clay, showcasing the artisan's attention to detail and their ability to transform a simple pot into a work of art. In the realm of woodworking, ancient Egyptian craftsmen created furniture that was both functional and aesthetically pleasing. Their creations ranged from simple stools to elaborate beds and chairs, often inlaid with ivory or gold and adorned with carvings of gods, animals, and complex geometric patterns. These pieces were not just household items, they were testaments to the skill and creativity of their makers. The ancient Egyptian skill in metalworking and jewelry making was equally impressive. They worked with a variety of metals, including gold, silver, and bronze, to create intricate jewelry, ceremonial objects, and weapons. The creativity of these craftsmen is apparent in the fine detail, the innovative designs, and the sophisticated techniques they employed. Their creations were not just beautiful, they were also symbolic often incorporating motifs from nature and mythology. Are we looking at Egyptian work, these grand pieces that have stood the test of time, with 2020th hindsight though? What I mean is, are we reading something into the everlasting pyramids and the other art that have stood the test of time? There's fair reason to think that the Egyptians were reaching for eternity with their mummifications and their massive structures and statues. While unraveling their convictions proves intricate due to translation hurdles and shifting cultural contexts, the essence remains clear. The Egyptians embraced a resolute faith in an everlasting existence. Dating back to the sixth dynasty, the foundation of their belief system is rooted in the concept of eternal life. This core belief was most vividly linked to the sun's perpetual cycle, with even the great Pepi I embodying the giver of life, stability, power, health, and joy. As the sun rejuvenated daily, so did their aspiration for rejuvenation in a future existence. Transitioning to the 18th dynasty, the Papyrus of Ani divulges intriguing dialogues with the beyond, in response to Ani's query about life's duration, the deity Anu proclaims, You shall exist for millions of years. The concept of continuity is further accentuated when Ani asserts, My soul is God, my soul is eternity. Nonetheless, clarity on the resurrection process remains elusive. While assurance in the soul's unending journey prevails, the interplay between the corporeal and ethereal remains uncertain. A passage notably states, soul ascends to heaven, body rests in earth. Conflicting ideas reflect that while Egyptians sought to preserve the body, they acknowledged the soul's higher plane of existence. In the continuum of Egyptian beliefs, the heart was an epicenter of life's essence and ethical judgments. Alongside the kat, physical body, and sahu, spiritual body, a profound abstract personality surged forth. This unique essence existed independently, conversing freely with gods and eventually becoming an indomitable force. Living along the Nile, the Egyptians found themselves in a constant dance with the river. The Nile's annual flooding, while fertile for the soil, presented challenges for the steady cultivation of crops. 
But true to their innovative spirit, the Egyptians didn't see a problem, they saw an opportunity. They developed innovative irrigation systems that not only tamed the mighty Nile, but also harnessed its power to fuel their agricultural practices. They dug canals and ditches to guide the floodwaters to their fields, turning a potentially destructive force into a life-giving boon. Among their most ingenious inventions were the shadoof and the nilometer. The shadoof, a simple yet effective tool, consisted of a long pole with a bucket at one end and a weight at the other. It was used to lift water from the river or canals to the fields. This basic mechanism revolutionized irrigation by allowing water to be transported against gravity, enabling the Egyptians to cultivate lands away from the river. The nilometer, on the other hand, was a device for measuring the Nile's water level. These structures, often located at temples, helped predict the success of the upcoming harvest by gauging the extent of the annual flood. This way, the Egyptians could plan their planting and harvesting activities with remarkable accuracy. It's important to note that our modern concept of creativity might not map exactly onto the ideas held by ancient cultures. However, we can still explore how the Egyptians approached what we would recognize as creative endeavors and how their language reflected these concepts. The ancient Egyptians did not have a specific word that translates directly to our contemporary understanding of creativity. However, they did have terms that embodied similar ideas. For instance, the word sasan meant to cause to breathe and was used to describe the act of giving life to something, a concept we might relate to the breathing life into an idea or project in a creative process. Furthermore, the god Ptah, considered the patron of craftsmen, was associated with the concept of heart and tongue. This phrase signified thought and speech, the processes of forming an idea and articulating it, essential components of what we would consider the creative process. Ancient Egyptians placed great emphasis on the idea of Heka, often translated as magic. Heka was the force that allowed things to happen and was often invoked in artistic and architectural endeavors, aligning with our modern sense of creativity as a process of bringing about something new. Creativity in ancient Egypt was often seen as an integral part of Ma'at, the concept of cosmic order and balance. Whether it was in the meticulous proportions of their architecture, the stylized rules of their art, or the rhythmic cycles of their agriculture, creativity was a way to align with, reflect, and contribute to this divine order. So while the ancient Egyptians might not have spoken of creativity as we do, their culture was steeped in practices that resonate with our understanding of the term. They valued innovation, craftsmanship, and the transformative power of bringing new ideas into being. And these values were reflected in their language, their mythology, and their approach to their world. The spiritual world of the ancient Egyptians was a veritable pantheon of deities and myths, each more captivating than the last. Their religion wasn't just a belief system, it was a testament to their boundless creative imagination. With over 2,000 recognized gods and goddesses, the ancient Egyptians created one of the most diverse and complex mythologies in human history. Each deity had a specific role, contributing to the balance and harmony of life, reflecting their deep-rooted belief in Mat, the divine order. Their creativity shone through in the way they represented their deities. Egyptian gods were often depicted with human bodies and animal heads. This unique form of creative symbolism allowed the Egyptians to represent the divine attributes of these gods. For instance, Anubis, the god of embalming and the dead, was depicted with the head of a jackal, an animal associated with cemeteries and decay. Horus, the sky god, was shown with the head of a falcon, embodying the expansive sky. Hathor, the goddess of love and joy, was often depicted with the head of a cow, symbolizing nurturing and fertility. This fusion of human and animal traits allowed the Egyptians to explore complex ideas about divinity and the natural world. The myths that populated Egyptian religion were equally creative. Epic tales of creation, battles between good and evil, stories of death and rebirth. These narratives showcased the Egyptians' ability to weave complex, symbolic stories that explored the mysteries of life, the universe, and the divine.
the ancient Egyptians' approach to medicine was groundbreaking for its time. Their understanding of the human body, diseases, and treatments was born out of a mix of empirical observation, spiritual beliefs, and creative problem-solving. They recognized and treated a range of diseases, from dental problems to gastrointestinal ailments. They developed a variety of remedies, many of which were derived from the plants and minerals around them, showcasing their innovative use of natural resources. Perhaps one of the most striking examples of their creativity in medicine was their practice of surgery. Despite the rudimentary tools at their disposal, Egyptian physicians performed surgical procedures such as setting broken bones and even trepanation, the practice of making a hole in the skull to treat health problems related to intracranial diseases or release pressured blood buildup. Their process of mummification also contributed to a basic understanding of anatomy. Although their knowledge was limited compared to today's standards, for the time, it was a significant leap in comprehending human physiology. The Edwin Smith Papyrus, one of the most well-preserved medical texts from ancient Egypt, is a testament to their medical knowledge. This document contains detailed descriptions of 48 cases of injuries, fractures, wounds, dislocations, and diseases. It not only shows the Egyptians' practical approach to medicine, but also their creative ability to document and share knowledge in a systematic way. The ancient Egyptians had a sophisticated sense of aesthetics, and this was evident in their use of cosmetics. But makeup in ancient Egypt was not just about enhancing physical appearance. It was also tied to health and ritualistic purposes. For instance, the iconic coal eyeliner worn by both men and women was believed to ward off the evil eye and protect against eye diseases. Green malachite eyeshadow was associated with the god Horus and was used in rituals as well as for aesthetic purposes. Their creativity was also manifested in the crafting of personal accessories. They made mirrors from polished copper and bronze and combs from ivory and bone. Jewelry was another area where they showcased their artistic flair Beads, amulets, rings, bracelets, and elaborate collar pieces were crafted from gold, silver, and semi-precious stones, bearing intricate designs and religious symbols. Fashion, too, was a canvas for Egyptian creativity. Their clothing styles varied over different periods, reflecting changes in society and cultural influences. In the Old Kingdom, men wore short skirts, while women wore straight, ankle-length dresses. The Middle Kingdom saw the introduction of pleated garments. By the New Kingdom, clothing had become more elaborate, with fringed shawls and large ornamental collars. The ancient Egyptians were among the first civilizations to turn a keen eye to the cosmos. Their observations of celestial bodies were driven not only by curiosity and reverence for the divine, but also by practical necessity. Their greatest astronomical achievement was the development of a solar calendar. This calendar, which was surprisingly accurate for its time, consisted of three 65 days divided into 12 months of 30 days each, plus an extra five days at the end of the year. While this may seem like a simple counting exercise, the creation of such a calendar required meticulous observation of the sun's cycle and the changing seasons. But the Egyptians' astronomical observations served a more immediate purpose as well. They were able to predict the annual flooding of the Nile by observing the stars, particularly the star Sirius, whose heliacal rising coincided with the flood season. This understanding was crucial for their agriculture as it allowed them to prepare for the flood and plan their planting accordingly. Music and dance were not mere forms of entertainment in ancient Egypt. They were integral parts of daily life, religious ceremonies, and even the afterlife. From the rhythmic drumming in a harvest celebration to the solemn hymns in a temple ritual, music was a way for the Egyptians to celebrate, to mourn, to worship, and to express a wide range of emotions. The ancient Egyptians invented many types of musical instruments, showcasing their creative innovation in sound. Lyres and harps produced melodies, while flutes and double reed instruments added layers of harmony. Percussion instruments like drums, sistra, and handheld rattles provided rhythm. 
They even had early versions of the trumpet for signaling in military and ceremonial contexts. Dance, too, was a significant part of Egyptian culture. While there were no written records of dance techniques, scenes of music and dance are commonly depicted in tomb paintings. These images show dancers in various poses, often accompanied by musicians, suggesting that music and dance were considered essential elements of joy and celebration in both this life and the next. The ancient Egyptians were not just masters of the land and the stars, they were also masters of the river. They were skilled shipbuilders, crafting vessels that were not only functional, but also works of art. Egyptian ships were used for various purposes, from transportation and fishing to religious ceremonies, each type showcasing their innovative design and high level of craftsmanship. The funerary boat of Pharaoh Khufu, discovered near the Great Pyramid, is a testament to their shipbuilding prowess. Measuring 44 meters long, the ship was intricately constructed from Lebanon cedar. It was not intended for actual sailing, but was a solar barge, a ritual vessel to carry the resurrected king with the sun god Ra across the heavens. The precision and craftsmanship involved in the construction of this ship, designed to remain intact for eternity, reflect the Egyptians' reverence for their pharaohs and their belief in the afterlife. But their creativity in shipbuilding was not just for the afterlife. They also designed practical vessels for everyday use. Papyrus boats were light and maneuverable, perfect for fishing and short trips. Wooden cargo ships capable of sailing up and down the Nile were used for transportation of goods, people, and during military campaigns. Whether it was a grand funerary barge for a pharaoh or a humble fishing boat, the ancient Egyptians' creativity in shipbuilding showcased their ability to harness the resources around them, their understanding of the natural world, and their deep spiritual beliefs. As we close out the show today, we recall that the Egyptians had a deep literary side. In fact, one work known as the Immortality of Writers considers the deeper legacy of those who put their words down for all time. Man perishes, his corpse turns to dust, all his relatives return to the earth. But writings make him remembered in the mouth of the reader. A book is more effective than a well-built house or a tomb chapel better than an established villa or a stealer in the temple. They gave themselves a book as their lector priest, a writing board as their dutiful son. Teachings are their mausolea, the reed pen their child, the burnishing stone their wife. Both great and small are given them as their children, for the writer is chief. Those writers known from the old days, the times just after the gods, those who foretold what would happen and did, whose names will endure for eternity. They disappeared when they finished their lives and all their kindred forgotten. They did not build pyramids in bronze with gravestones of iron from heaven. They did not think to leave a patrimony made of children who would give their names distinction. Rather, they formed a progeny by means of writing and in the books of wisdom they left. Join us in the next episode of Square One as we continue our exploration of the history of creativity. Until then, keep imagining, keep creating, and remember that every creative journey begins at Square One. The Clay Podcast Network. Big ideas take shape here. Go to www.clay.inc.